Hi, my name's Randy Curry and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make what I feel is the perfect chili recipe. I've uh, experimented with several chili recipes down through the years and I never really came up with anything that I really thought was the perfect recipe. Uh, but I have one now uh, through trial and error and I'm going to show you how to make what I feel is just a wonderful, wonderful recipe. Now first, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to brown the ground beef. Now what I have here, I always get extra lean. Uh, you can get sirloin, you can get ground chuck, or you can get ground beef. I Usually it's whatever's available. But the first thing you're going to do is brown two pounds of ground beef. Now what I'm using is four. I'm cooking for a lot of people. We got some company coming over and we're going to have a little party and I'm having a chili party. So I'm doubling my recipe. I'm using four pounds, but what you will use is two pounds. Uh, plus, with me being an over-the-road truck driver, I'm going to freeze this in packets, and I heat it throughout the week. So the first thing I do is get my ground beef going here. Now I got a little trick if you want to bring the camera on over here. Uh, we'll stop the filming in a minute and pick this back up. Uh, when you're wanting beef to be crumbled, I like using a big pot rather than a skillet. Even if I was going to cook uh, like tacos and uh, most people use a skillet, I still like using something deep. Because what we'll do is once this starts browning, I'll just stir it like this and uh, you'll see how well it crumbles. So right now we'll stop the filming and we'll pick it back up in just a minute when the beef is about half browned. The beef is getting close to being done here. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm cooking it till all the pink is gone, till it's brown. Then we're going to strain it. I got my strainer here. Going to strain it and get all the uh, all the grease out, and then I'm going to put the beef back in the pan. The beef is uh, back in the pan. You can see here it's very very crumbled. That's why I I'm sold on cooking beef in a deep dish here. Now, first thing I'm going to do is add tomato sauce. Whatever brand of tomato sauce you choose, that's fine. One can of tomato sauce for one batch. Remember, I'm making two batches here. For one batch, you use two pounds of beef. I'm using four. For uh, one batch, you would use one can of tomato sauce. I'm using two. So, I got my tomato sauce in. And I'm going to go ahead right now, I've had this on medium heat, I'm going to go ahead and drop it down to low heat right now. And when I add these ingredients, we're going to cook this on low heat for an hour. Now what you want is beef broth here. You can use beef stock or beef broth. I'm using beef broth. Either one works. You would have one can and put half a can in. I'm using two cans. So I'm putting a whole can in right now, and I'm going to save this other can for later. We'll talk about that in, in a little bit. Now the other ingredients that go in right now. First thing is garlic. I have four cloves of garlic diced up here. All you need is two cloves. We'll put the garlic in. Chili powder. I have four tablespoons of chili powder. You need two tablespoons. Put that in. Brown sugar. This sounds crazy, but believe me, brown sugar works real well in chili. You don't need a lot of it though. I have two teaspoons. All you need is one teaspoon. Cumin. I have two teaspoons. Once again, all you need is one teaspoon. And then oregano. I have two teaspoons. All you need is one teaspoon. <laughs> Once again. Now here's the part you have to be careful of. And this is 
uh, what I wanted to discuss on customizing your chili, whether you like chili spicy or whether you like it mild. Right now I'm fixing mild chili. This is cayenne pepper. I have half a teaspoon in here. All you need is a quarter teaspoon. A quarter teaspoon per two pounds of beef or one uh, recipe of chili is mild. If you like spicy chili, and I'm going to show you how to customize this to the way you like it. If you want spicy chili, I'm going to show you how to make spicy chili. If you want mild chili, I'll show you how to make mild. Right now, this is going to be mild. Since we have company coming over, you can go ahead and bring the camera over here and see what this looks like at right now. Uh, since we have company coming over, some people like chili spicy, some people like it mild. You can always add more heat to chili, but you can't take it away. Uh, so I'm going to show you a little bit later on. We're going to test the chili and see if we like it, if we think it's too mild, if we want more heat to it. And really all that comes in in the last 15 minutes of uh, cooking the chili. So right now I have uh, one green pepper, one red pepper, and one onion. I'm going to dice these up and then I'll discuss them in a minute uh, when we're ready to add them to the chili. My peppers are diced. Now I want to show you how to customize chili to your liking. Uh, not everyone likes peppers in chili. I do. I've seen a lot of chili recipes that have peppers in it, a lot of chili recipes that don't. This is to make it to your liking. Now, which should you use, red pepper or green pepper? Uh, I like them both. Whichever one you like the best, I've seen recipes with green pepper, I've seen recipes with red pepper. Or you can do what I'm doing, and that's use both. Uh, the only thing, I don't think you need a whole lot of pepper in a chili recipe. Now what I've done here is I've cut my peppers and I've separated it half and half. So I'm using half a pepper in my chili. There's half of the green. And here's half of the red. That's an equivalence of one pepper for two batches. Now if you were making it, you could do a quarter of a pepper for one batch. Now what you can do is put the pepper in and then evaluate it. Look at your chili. In fact, you can bring that camera over here and you can look at it and say, do I want more pepper in there or do I think that looks like enough? To me, this looks perfect. I think any more pepper would be a little bit overkill. Now what do you do with that extra pepper? It's not going to go to waste. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to sear it in a skillet and I'm going to save it for a little bit later in the week where I'm going to make a nacho cheese dipping sauce with tortillas. So right now we got our pepper in there and one other secret and this is wonderful don't let this scare you. I have Baker's chocolate uh, semi-sweet baking chocolate squares. Now this is very easy to separate these are one ounce squares they already come already separated a lot of people would think it's crazy to put chocolate in chili, but believe me, this works. What I'm doing is putting one ounce of chocolate per batch of chili. I have two batches here, so I'm using two. You would use one. I remember the first time I put chocolate in chili, uh, Sandy just was very nervous and concerned about it, thinking, yes, this is not going to work. This is going to ruin it. And after I put it in it, she said, make sure you put chocolate and chili every time you make it. It is wonderful. It really adds a wonderful taste. But you don't need a whole lot. All you need is one ounce per batch of chili. Just remember that. And what I like about this, since I don't use it that often, and chili is really about the only recipe I use this for, I keep this in the freezer. And I just freeze it, and then I pull it out every time I need it. So right now, I've got all my ingredients in here, and when we get done with this, towards the end, I'm going to show you how to thicken chili up if you like more of a Texas-style uh, thick chili where you can like put a 
spoon up and down in it and have it stand. Or if you like more of a more soupy chili, I'm going to show you how to make it like that. This is making it to the way you like it. Now I personally like chili a little bit on the runny side, the soupy side. I like it a little mild. But I love to experiment. Periodically I like to make a Texas style chili where it's it's thick and hot and spicy. So I'm going to show you how to do that right towards the end of the recipe. So right now I've got all my ingredients in there. The only thing I did not add that you can add to it right now is salt. Uh, my wife has high blood pressure so I try to eliminate salt from our diet. Right now if you want to you could put one teaspoon of salt in the chili. A batch this size you would use two teaspoons. So it's ready to cook. We're going to pick the onion up later. Right now the onion's going to sit there. I'm going to look at the clock. One hour. And one hour from now we're going to continue. And I'm just going to periodically stir it. I have it on low heat right now. So let's just let it cook for one hour. Okay, I'm ready to uh, prepare my uh, little pepper queso dip for next week. Uh, I'm actually not preparing the queso dip. I'm just going to cook the peppers. I went ahead and cut up my onion. I've got equal parts here. This is going to be for my recipe for next week. I've got a skillet cooking on high, my frying pan, uh, non-stick Teflon, and I put a little bit of oil in there. And I cut up the rest of the onion. Now, Sandy and I, we both like uh, raw onions in chili. You can, if you want to, go ahead and put the onions in at the same time you put the peppers in, if you want cooked onions. Once again, this is customizing it to the way you like it, not necessarily the way someone else likes it. Uh, we like raw onions, so I'm going to save the onions, and we're going to use this as a table garnish, put this on the table for people to uh, put onions in their chili if they want onions. Plus, we got a couple kids coming over. Uh, kids don't always like onions, so we're going to go ahead and leave the onions out for that. And right now, I'm just going to go ahead, I've got my skillet on high. Well, not high, but medium high. I want these to get seared real well. I want, the, uh, want them to have almost a little bit of a blackening on them. That's the way I like it. I like them to where it's uh, very caramelized. We'll just cook this for a couple minutes. Okay, if you want to bring the camera over here and get kind of close on the uh, peppers and onions, you can see that's about what I wanted, where it's you're starting to get a little bit of blackening. Now what I think I'm going to do in addition to using these next week on my nacho cheese, just like I got the onions here that are going to be an optional garnish, I think I'm going to give the guests tonight an opportunity to add these to their chili if they want to. Once again, this is making it as spicy or as little spicy as you want it, as much pepper or as little pepper. Uh, this is a good way of finding out how much pepper you actually like in a chili too is to have some extra like that where you can always add to it. So I'm going to go ahead and let that cool. This is going to be garnish. Let's take a peek at the chili here. It's coming along good. See right now it's very soupy. In about 30 minutes on our next step I'll show you how to thicken or how to thin your chili to the way that you like it. Our chili's been cooking for an hour and now it's we're getting down to the final steps here, adding the beans. Now on beans, what I like is red beans and black beans. Uh, this is another thing of customizing it the way that you like it. Uh, most people prefer kidney beans in chili. Uh, I just like red beans and black beans a little bit better. Uh, there's a few different bean choices. You can use red beans, black beans, kidney beans. Uh, the other popular choice is pinto beans. So once again, this is customizing it the way that you like it. These are the beans I prefer, but it may not be what you prefer. 
So just go ahead and use whatever you like. I've already rinsed them. I've drained them. So I'm going to go ahead and dump them in the chili. Before I dump them, let's take a look at this. Now you can see, after it's been cooking here, the amount of red pepper and green pepper I put in there is rather mild. It's rather spaced out. That's why I don't go real heavy on the pepper. I like it to have a little bit, but not really what I would call an overkill. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the beans in. Now on beans, what I did here is I've used one can per two pounds of beef. What I would suggest that most people would prefer is two pounds per two cans per two pounds. I think that's a little bit overkill. I like chili to be more meat than beans. But most of the recipes that I've looked at, I've noticed that people really use about one can per every pound of beans. So that's a, a good rule. Uh, I mean one can per every pound of beef. I take that back. Okay, now what I got here, and this is a wonderful step, I got corn masa, which you can get this pretty much at any store. Take a quarter of a cup, I'm using one cup, put it in a bowl, and remember the uh, broth that I told you to set aside? Now I've got a full container, you will have a half a container, because we put half of it in earlier. Just go ahead and put that in the bowl, take a fork, we just want to dissolve it a little bit. It doesn't have to be fully dissolved. We're just going to stir this for just a minute. And out a minute, we're going to stir it for about 15 seconds, and that'll be good enough. Now, this corn masa adds a wonderful flavor to the chili. Uh, once you try it, you'll like it. It's one of those little subtle tastes. Uh, I always knew cornbread goes good with chili, so... I thought the corn masa, it really works. And this is going to thicken the chili up. Right now, it's a little bit on the thin side. So I've added the corn masa. I'll stir it a little bit here. We've got all our ingredients in here. This is down to the final step. So now I'm going to stir it, and we're going to cook this for another 30 minutes. Now, once again, you can see the bean consistency. Uh, I don't do an overboard of beans. To me, I think that's just about perfect. You can see it's a... Uh, I've got half a can per every pound of beef. You can use a full can per pound, or you can use a half a can like I use. Customizing it to the way you like it. That's what this is all about today. Over here, I decided to go ahead and make some corn muffins. Now, my corn muffin recipe... It's nothing fancy. I just use store-bought corn muffin, whatever you like. When I made the mixture, it calls for uh, 12 muffins, and I've got it. I had a little bit extra, so I'm going to try something here. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I had a little bit of ex extra corn muffin mix, so I just put it in a little ceramic boat here that I can cook in the oven, and I added some of my peppers and onions to it. Now, I may like this, I may not like this. I probably shouldn't be doing this on film. I probably should have tried it first. But we're going to go ahead and experiment here and cook both of these together. And uh, we'll see how it turns out. We're 15 minutes away from being finished. So, right now is the time to customize our chili. If you want to come over here... Now is the time to determine how thick you like it. Do I want it to be thicker or thinner than what it is right now? See how that stands right by itself? This is pretty thick chili. Now there's nothing wrong with that. Most people would like it just like that. I like it a little bit runnier. So I'm going to put one cup of water in it. Now if you wanted it even thicker right now, all you could do is add a little bit more corn masa to it. Now the reason I do it 15 minutes ahead of time is to make sure that the corn masa has an opportunity to uh, cook. You don't want to add it right at the very last second. You want to add it just a little bit earlier. Now one other thing I'm going to do, I'm just barely going to taste this. I'm checking the heat. 
just about right. If I felt like it needed to be a little bit spicier, right now is when I would add more cayenne pepper. I think it's just about perfect for my taste. Uh, but you may like it a little bit spicier. Right now is your time to add just a little bit more pepper if you think it needs more. Once again, you can always add heat, but you can't take it away. So, since we have guests coming over tonight, I definitely want mild chili. I'm going to give them the option. I'm going to have cayenne pepper on the table. If they want it a little hotter, they can make it a little hotter. Everything is finished. Why don't we go ahead and bring the camera on over here and we'll take a look at the chili. And turn the heat off. See what we got here. Now you can see what I have here is a very heavy meat consistency. Light on the beans, light on the peppers. That's customizing it for me. Typically there would be more beans in here, a little bit more peppers, but this is the way I like it. So that's what we're talking all about today is making it the way that you like it. So I've already played it over here. Let's bring the camera over here. Here's a bowl of chili. Now what I did, I put the chili in. I put a little bit of my garnish topping on it that I'm going to give our guest an opportunity to have. And I put a little bit of onions around it. Uh, the, you can see the corn muffins over here. The only thing I would say about corn muffins is... Uh, Whenever you're fixing corn muffins, what I found out, rather than going by what the box says, which is usually around 400 degrees, 425, I cook them on 325 to 350 at the very highest. I found that it burns the bottom of the muffins if you cook them any higher than that. So 325 is what I cook those on. Our little dish here that I'm experimenting with, this looks good. It came out. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to help it out here a little bit onto the plate. I like the looks of it so far. I'm going to cut a little piece. Let's go ahead and cut this with a knife. I'm just going to take a... Actually, I'll take an end piece here. Let me just see how this tastes. You know, that works. I like this. I think next time I make muffins I'm going to do probably half of them with the green peppers and red peppers in it and onions. If you like green peppers, red peppers and onions and you like corn muffins it just makes sense they'd go together. This actually works real well. So I think I'm going to make that again. Let's see how the chili tastes. Ooh, steam is still rolling off of it. It's still hot. Mmm. Very good. Mmm. Love it. Just a perfect amount of heat for me. It's not very spicy. It's mild. It's about the right consistency that I like it. I think our guests are going to love this tonight. So I can't wait. Uh, why don't you go ahead, try this recipe, customize it to your liking. And if you think it's a very cool recipe, let me know. Until next time, this is Randy Curry. And right now, I'm going to finish this bowl of chili before our guests show up so I can have another one when they get here.